lawsuit exposes international Hindu trafficking in Hindu temples. A recent expansion to a lawsuit originally filed against a New Jersey temple of the Hindu organization, uh, Bocha San Wasi Akshar Purushottam Swami Naranyan Sam Samtha, or I'm just going to call it, it's BAPS. What just happened? BAPS. Right. BAPS is the acronym. So we're going to call it BAPS for short. Has okay. so a lot of an expansion to a lawsuit originally filed in New Jersey against BAPS has revealed a human trafficking scheme that spans across oceans in five U.S. states. The lawsuit now also includes BAPS affiliated temples in California, Illinois, Texas, and Georgia. The organization is accused of luring mostly Dalit, known as the untouchables, uh, mostly Dalit men from India and making them work in grueling conditions for little more than $1 per hour. BAPS brought the workers to the United States under R1 non-immigrant religious workers visas, which are intended for individuals who work in religious capacities, not manual labor. The death of a worker known as Mohal Lal triggered a worker strike against the unsafe working conditions. Workers claimed their passports were stolen, that they were forced to live and work in a garden compound and threatened violence if they left unescorted. The lawsuit triggered a federal raid on the New Jersey property, and three U.S. federal agencies are involved in the investigation, including the FBI, the Department of Homeland Security, and the Department of Labor. This is in, I couldn't believe this is in the U.S. Yes, Hindu Hindu temples are taking trafficking people from the Dalit from Dalit the lower caste from yes. India to United States as slaves. Yes, and this is one dollar an hour in the U.S. Like this is like I thought like one dollar an hour like in India like wow this is slavery this is. And the fact that they're doing like it can't get any more Hindu than this. The fact that they're doing this to the to the outcast, to the Dalit community, like it's so Hindu. Like this is like they're using the temples and they're doing this to the lower caste community. Like if you know how like sometimes we try to be charitable and be like, is this actually a bad religion or is this something else? Like this can't get more religious. Yes, not this. only is it are they doing it to the Dalit community, but I should mention that they're also doing it to the Adivasi community who are known as the tribals, like the original indigenous people of India who are um, have a contentious relation with Hinduism. Sometimes they fall outside of it. Sometimes when it's convenient, they try to say, oh, yes, you are Hindu. Um, but yes, these th in India, they're known as um, the uh scheduled tribes and castes which so, means so like both of the both minorities. of the cat both of the castless communities basically yeah both of the communities that don't fall into any of the hinduism caste system um amazing and but guys the reason why they can do this to the outcast the castless society uh, community is because they are the ones that they're the most vulnerable they're the easiest to take advantage of uh go on this was a quote from a, a New Jersey um, newspaper saying the suit, the lawsuit says that BAPS intentionally recruited workers from scheduled castes. I explained what that was and also known as Dalits and other marginalized communities in India in order to maintain control over them. In India, people belonging to this caste are referred to as untouchables who are in, endure near complete social ostracization. BAPS used this to its advantage, the complaint says, by referring to the workers as worms and continuously reminding them of their perceived place in the social hierarchy. Wow. So they use caste language, you know, Hindu language, caste language as a way to put, put them in their place. Yes, and justified Guys, it religiously. You know how we keep saying like Islam endorses slavery and, you know, as, if slavery is allowed in Islam. Um, you know, there's hadith for it. There's a Quran verses that shows that um, and Christianity, you know, Judaism and Christianity also have scripture uh, that shows that they endorse slavery. And the defense of the Muslims and the Jewish people and Christians are like, that was for back then. We don't endorse slavery today anymore. 
that was back then the norms were different back then the situation the standards were different well at least, apparently apparently hinduism has came along and says hold my cow piss because i will because <laughs> i will bring i will i will i will have i will endorse slavery today today based on modern standards in the united states of america by the way i want to congratulate like can we like is this like a how was is this a fbi and every other organizations like did they manage to catch this soon like is was this done? so there there was a federal raid on the property the was, same day that this lawsuit was filed but it wasn't okay. filed by a federal body okay we do know that the fbi the dhs and the dol are investigating but we do not know if it is a criminal investigation okay let me make that clear we do not know if there's a federal criminal investigation it's just has been reported that these three different federal bodies are investigating um i one <laughs> wait this is a hilarious comment by mia hindus treat lower castes worse than dirt also hindus the caste system was introduced by the british no they would say britishers yeah also that's a lie the caste system is ancient and it's in it's in the original scripture it's in the videos they're like they're very very old it's actually you can see that in scripture in hindu scripture very ancient hindu scripture specifically detailing um how every cat where, where, what's the position of every cast is but yeah go on what's particularly disturbing is so a number of the people who are um claimants in the original uh a lawsuit are no longer residing in the US they've gone back to India but what's so disturbing is that numerous workers who used to work on these properties in New Jersey um have they they went back to India and died shortly afterwards possibly mm. because of the ill treatment that they received on these properties now so we actually covered this story when it first happened back in May um mm -hmm. but what happened now is that this lawsuit has been expanded and it's been revealed that it's not just happening in new jersey it's happening in other baps affiliated um temples wow. across the entire country like i said california georgia illinois and what was the last one um texas and what's also should this is so important this is so important they are heavily affiliated in with narendra modi the prime minister of india and they have this organization which is one of the largest hindu sects in the world um has pledged almost three hundred thousand dollars to go towards building a temple on top of the demolished barbary mosque um mm. in uh, Ayodhya. i can never say that right which is a highly highly contentious religious site in india which um i'm going to talk a little bit more later in the news show but like it's that's i feel like that's really really important to highlight um and the lawyers on behalf of baps they try to say that so not only is there like labor trafficking accusations there's also immigration fraud accusations and they're trying to say that oh actually federal agencies like they were totally fine with approving r1 visas for um these um many of these laborers were like stonemasons um or like carvers or sculptors and they're like oh yeah the federal agencies were doing this for a whole, like for a long time they're totally fine with it they would investigate like the property and where they were living all the time and they never saw a problem um but since then the feds raided the biggest temple i think i think it's the biggest temple the new jersey one mm, actually don't quote me on that i think i might be wrong i think the biggest one might be in texas um and now uh i believe all the workers have left that property i'm not i'm not sure where they are now many of them have returned to india um what can we well, okay based on everything you've seen like was uh, you know was the fbi like and homeland security and department of labor and everybody else involved were they like responsive were they like as soon as they got a reports of this were did they ignore this like I, how would you rank their effort i just want to see if i could say like congratulations or like boo like yay or boo um 
I don't know enough to be able to give okay. you an accurate there? answer That's to fair. that. That's I good, would good say answer. that this is pure speculation, but the fact that they raided on the same day that the lawsuit was filed, mm -hmm. they probably had some form of heads up. That's a, mm -hmm. that's complete that's speculation, but like that, that can't be a coincidence. Right. And I like, you know, I mean, I can criticize the feds on a lot of things, but <laughs> like they, they are very particular when they take action. Right. Mm -hmm. And they have, they because they are a federal body they have a high standard for when they can actually take these kinds of actions so again yeah. my own speculation uh or based on my knowledge like i think that they had um they it's wouldn't have done something like that, that so severe if they didn't have a, they have a high burden of proof i just want every single one of these people in this hindu organization to just like get in trouble for this because this like the fact that they thought they could get away with this it's unbelievable. You know, what I mean, I just want there to be made clear that this is not, this is not how this. You, you can't do this. You can't do this. I hope like, what made them feel like they can get away with this? Like, is there a loophole? Like, is do we do they have precedent for other people getting away with it? By the way, I do want to criticize Mia a little bit here, saying Mia is saying the woke are complaining about slavery in America. I guess they were right after all. Only the, they were targeting the wrong people. Mia, what are you talking about? Slavery in America, the slavery that you're referring to was is, is real and it was really bad in America and no, the I effects think, of it. I think Mia's talking about modern day slavery as in like prison labor. I know. I think, he, no, no. He's talking about the woke mentioning like the North Atlantic slave trade. And if you're saying that they're complaining about that, I mean, that they they should be because the effect of that is still being felt today. So I don't want to, like, just because we have modern forms of slavery, that doesn't mean that you could completely dismiss the effect of, I mean, that was like, that was intense and insane. That was really bad. The North Atlantic slave trade is one of the worst examples of uh, slavery in history. Um, well, also, there is 100% just straight up slavery and human trafficking still happening in the United States. It's a global problem. Um, yeah, no, but Mia is saying it was, it no longer exists. That was what, it, what I mean. It wasn't, okay, Mia, but it wasn't that long ago. And that the, the effects of it on the community is multi-generational. So it, just because slavery is, doesn't exist, that doesn't mean you're not going to feel the effects of it today. Like, you know, poverty, a lack of education, lack of access to capital, these things, the effects of these do not just get wiped right after you make something illegal. It will, it, it, you know, just like wealth, the effects of wealth is multi-generational. The effect of poverty and la lack of access to resources and education and networks, that's also multi-generational. So you can't, you cannot completely dismiss the people who are um, still trying to highlight the effects of slavery today, right? It's not completely dismissible. Yeah, I also um, want to say that this is really interesting. This is a quote from the New York Times. The amended complaint, meaning this recent expansion to it, um, accused BAPS officials of violating state labor laws in the Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act, better known as RICO, which was created to go after organized crime. So now the lawyers in this, this expanded lawsuit are trying to paint and trying to get BAPS um, charged with organized crime. This is hefty. This is big. These are, um, and then it continues just for uh, clarity. There are hefty requirements to allow a lawsuit to move forward as a RICO case. Judges are reluctant to permit a state law claims to turn a, into a federal case by claiming that there has been a violation of the RICO Act. So that there's very high burden of proof there to get it um, to that high of a standard. But it's going to be very interesting um, to see how um, this this case evolves and just to be clear these are the claims presented in the lawsuit right like this this hasn't hit court yet there hasn't been a trial yet they have not been declared guilty yet we are reporting on what has been accused and what has been mm -hmm. alleged okay yes important disclaimer and um yes like i when, when, mm -hmm, go ahead occam's razor would um lead us to believe that this happened however outcomes razor is not foolproof and in case we get updates that all of a sudden everything we assumed was wrong and all of these people were innocent 
um, and none of this happened, we will come up with a new news report and give you the correction. However, um, again, applying a comes razor, we will, but for now, go with what's most, uh, what's more likely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But as with this news, just like with every other news, you always have to be skeptical. Yeah. Given that the fact that there was a federal raid on the property, um, mm -hmm. I'm going to give a fair amount of credence to these accusations. But like I said, because this has not had its day in court yet, the details could change. Right. Okay. Um, this is so funny. No, 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 no. Let me comment. This response to this. this is so funny. Um, Sneha is saying, so innocent till found guilty. A few minutes ago, Armin was pronouncing them guilty. I still do because I, uh, this is not a court of law. Okay. This is, we're working based on probabilities and we will also declare our skepticism, which always applies. Our skepticism applies to every single news. Every single news that we report here could potentially be wrong. We always say that. And if we find out that it was wrong, we'll come up with a correction. We just go, we just respond to the news as it, with the most likely scenario. When you say innocent or found guilty, that is the standard that you apply if you are a judge sitting in a goddamn court, okay? You can't we're not the state. <laughs> Yeah, we're not the state. You can, if you have to apply that standard when it comes to commentary on everything in your in your life, then the level of skepticism will make it so in, insanely impossible for you to have any opinion on anything. Do you understand how ridiculous of a standard that is for our for daily commentary on things? Just know that we apply some level of skepticism to everything, but then we use Occam's razor and we respond to the things with the most like given what what is the most likely thing that is happening and again you have to be skeptical yourself and you know when we report to the news we're basing it on what is being reported and we are very happy to come and we will be actually we would be very proud of coming and saying oh actually that news was wrong and here's a correction we would love the opportunity to do that because it will show that we're honest with you if we report on something and then the um so a contradictory information comes out we were like yes susie let's go and show people that how honest we are by showing them that oh that news that we reported was wrong so guess what if this comes out and it's wrong we will have a new segment on it okay and yeah but so by now we just go what's the most probable because our opinion is not going to determine the reason why the standard is different in the court of law is because these people's lives depend on it, whether they go to jail or not go to jail. Okay. The entire justice system depends on it. It doesn't depend on my opinion and Susie's opinion. So it's easier for us to treat things based on what is the most probable outcome rather than what is the most 100% provable. Okay. We go, we apply outcomes razor. Okay. This is what's being reported. We're going by that. Yeah. I just wanted to, point out a few things. One, the fact that they steal these workers' passports, like, makes this slavery. Like, this is what they do to immigrant workers in Qatar. Like, horrible practices. Um, second, um, <laughs> this makes me laugh so hard. Hindutva Susanna, who I think I know who was behind this Hindutva Susanna account. Okay, so, so Hindutva Susanna is parodying what a Hindu, Hindutva person would say. Say, Christian missionaries would do the fa same fake lawsuit thing when we build temples in India. <laughs> <laughs> and and um, liberal, oh, you um, it, okay. liberal Bengali Hindu is saying, shame on BAPS because of them, some of the activists will start targeting Hindus in the United States. I I don't think so at all. I, I don't think so at all. Frankly, mm -hmm. um, uh, Hinduism isn't really on the radar in the United States. Um, in terms of like a national dialogue or um, I'm sure that in a, in a country where you're a religious minority, people say dumb stuff and probably have some prejudice and ignorance towards Hindus. But um, I, there, in, I highly doubt that there will be any effort to target or um, blame all Hindus for this action. Um, this is about a mm. specific organization. Um, if and, if Hindus if Hindus get targeted um, for being Hindus, me and Susanna will come and defend, like be on oh my the God, side of, of course. defending. Yeah, and you um, had something else you wanted to say? Yeah, two things I want to highlight because this is really funny. Sneha is saying, "Okay, then I wait. I wait. I wish I think you say. I hope that the temple files a libel case against you. 
I hope so too as well. Now that would be fantastic. We would have so much fun with that. Please get in touch with them and tell them to do that. Oh my God, that would be beautiful. Yeah, us as did, well as did, the did, New York Times, the Associated Press, Al Jazeera. <laughs> yeah, do, do you know? Do you know how much that would benefit us now? You have no idea. This is why Hendutva doesn't get how much their attacks on us has benefited us. Like it has benefited us so far. Like they never learn. They never understand. But also, this is very funny. There have been, by, by the way, okay, so actually, let me read this. Snaha is saying, there have been many times before when your news has been found wrong about India. Example, when you reported about a Muslim being harassed by Hindu, uh, when police found it was over an amulet. Actually, every time we check, like the things that you're saying, when we check, like this is a whole bunch of Hindutva getting butthurt over um, us actually reporting the news accurately. And they believe in conspiracies, and they they only they only come yelling fake news when their precious religion is being targeted. And many times when we actually checked if the news was correct, we when they come out in the comment section and told us that we have been reporting fake news, we went back and checked, and many times actually we were reporting it correctly. Okay. However, um, it's possible that sometimes we get things wrong. Okay. If we do notice it, we will come and um correct it okay so actually here snaha we will recheck the story for you and if it's incorrect we will come and report it however i do know that many times many many times when we double checked when hindu find the comment section told us that we are reporting fake news we double checked and they were believing the fake news and we were reporting the accurate news so there you go um but again not always obviously we're not going to be perfect okay so so do you want to add anything or do you want us to no i was just looking into that news um yeah. we will look uh what i final thought is that we are going to be following this lawsuit because this is a huge story and um, yes I, I said that when this was filed in may this is the update mm. we're going to be keeping an eye on it actually that's very interesting okay so all the people like sneha who are claiming that this is fake news okay so if we notice actually that something we reported was wrong we will come and we will fix we will tell people that what we reported was wrong okay but what are the chances of the people who are saying this is fake news if all of a sudden these people are found guilty and the reports are accurate what are the chances that Sneha is going to come into the show? Guys, you were right. I was wrong. Like, what are the chances of Hindu for coming out? Like, oh, yeah, this was like, this is like a legitimate thing you guys reported. You guys were correct. And we were, it was, it was, I was wrong to doubt you. And I was wrong to doubt the story. I, I just assumed that everything anti Hindu, Hindu, anti Hindu must be a conspiracy theory. And I should maybe have better standards that just being so sensitive and defensive makes sense. Like, what are the chances of them coming out? They did, they, they would not come and do that. Okay. Sneha, maybe you will prove us wrong we'll see atheist republic needs your help we have been the target of many legal attacks by hindu nationalists ever since our founder armin Abhabi blasphemed against hindu deities we have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in india we have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues including judicial harassment and censorship whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight link in the description below